One minute. Ready? Put the one cracker, ten seconds. I'm not even done with it yet. I feel like I might get the four. We're almost halfway. Oh, really? <laughs> We're halfway. I'm a bit of a competitor, so I'm trying to stay ahead of you. Oh, boy. Hitting the wall? Hitting the wall, right? <laughs> Go down. <laughs> They're all building up. I feel like Joey Chestnut. Better move out the way, because I'm coming with harder hits. My head is as hard as a brick, but I'm harder than hard it is. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. This episode is brought to you by Visit Luzerne County. Craving a slice of excitement? Dive into the Visit Luzerne County Pizza Trail. Eat pizza, earn points, and turn those points into prizes. It's simple. Sign up for free at visitluzernecounty.com to get started. No apps, no hassle, just savory rewards. Check in with the partner restaurants to rack up points with every delicious slice. The best part? Those points unlock awesome pizza-themed prizes. Where else can you eat pizza and earn rewards? Sign up for free today at visitluzernecounty.com and let the pizza party begin. This episode is brought to you by Dino's Pizza and Italian Restaurant. Craving authentic Italian flavor? Meet Dino's Pizza and Italian Restaurant, your taste bud's new best friend in Wilkes-Barre. From premium pizzas to mouth-watering pastas, every bite is a slice of heaven. Family owned and operated for two generations, Dino's is proud to serve you with passion and tradition. Conveniently located inside the Wyoming Valley Mall, Dino's is open daily for dine-in or takeout. Don't feel like leaving home? No problem. Have it delivered right to your doorstep by ordering online at dinospizzaandrestaurant.com or on DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and Slice. Dine-in, order online, or call 570-829-2601. Taste your tradition at Dino's Pizza and Italian Restaurant today. Welcome to Food Fight, presented by Good Tree MMA. I'm here with my friend Jim Maribelli from NEPA Pizza Review. Jim, I absolutely had to have you here to be my first guest, and we'll get to that in a couple minutes. But Jim, welcome to Food Fight. I'll tell you what, it's, it's quite an honor to be on the ground floor of this ground-shaking, earth-shattering show <laughs> here. So I, I, it's quite an honor to be with you, and I look forward to what you're going to bring to NEPA and beyond. Uh, really excited to be a part of the show. So thank you. I, I appreciate that, man. I'm glad that we um, we collaborate together and we're not enemies on the Facebook like some people expect us to be or like who's this guy doing this review and stuff like that. So you know, we've been you've been actually guiding me along for a while now. And real quick, you know, I have I have um, merch envy because your merchandise is fantastic. Your shirts, your hats. I don't have any. I don't even have any of my own merchandise except for one shirt I have, you know, but you did bring me holiday sweater which is look at that sweatshirt that's really nice so thank you very much merry merry christmas a little late here uh, but uh you know so i always enjoyed making one of those up every year so that's absolutely perfect man i really i really appreciate that so when i get some shirts made and some stuff made i'll send some of your way so all right bro uh, wear it proudly for sure absolutely man so like i said earlier you know i wanted you to be my first guest because um when i first started my food page on facebook it was called Dimitez NEPA Pizza Review. Oh, I'm, excuse me, any Dimitez NEPA Food Review. And it just seemed like the NEP name, and for me, it was like, because that was already in your name, you're doing your pizza thing, and I'm doing pizza reviews too. And I wasn't trying to copy anyone, I was trying to do my own thing. And I want to do other stuff, but I remember I made a post of it, something that wasn't in NEPA. And someone got at me like, oh, this is why I don't like pages like this, because this is not, this is outside of NEPA. And I'm like, <clears throat> All right, I guess we, I, I know where he's coming from. But then I remember talking to you and a few other guys, and you suggested Food Fight. And I was just like, immediately, I'm like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? What made you come up with that for me? Which I really, again, I appreciate that, man, because now we're sitting here on our first episode of the Food Fight podcast. So it, it was really neat because I, I came across you. Well, first, I follow every local page I can imagine. You know, any restaurant I'm aware of, I follow. Uh, any local news, anything like that, I follow. But as soon as you posted your first video, um, I think I got like 10 messages saying, like, this guy's stepping on your territory. And like, <laughs> who's this guy? We got to get him out of here. And 
Uh, I was like, no, that, like, uh, first of all, I love all local food reviews and anybody that wants to get in there and put yourself in front of a camera and put yourself out there uh, to, you know, to provide your opinion. Like, I respect that because like, you, know, you got to have some thick skin to do what we do. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, so then, you know, I, I watched a little of your stuff and uh, the, the one video that I always tell people about is. You were you were like getting choked out on the octagon mat <laughs> and uh, tapping out, but you're still eating the pizza. And I, I remember being in tears. And I don't yeah. think we were talking yet. Yeah. When you, and uh, so then we, you know, we we sort of linked up and talked a little bit. And I and I thought like you have such charisma and you're such a character, right? It can't have any PA really. Like you're big, like. I, I'm more like I'm a you know I, I've I established NEPA early on mm -hmm. right yeah. so I don't yeah. own NEPA right. first of all um, it's just NEPA pizza review but like I just felt that for you to limit yourself to a geographic location would have been a mistake because I, I really see something in you that you're, you're going to be big yeah. you know what I mean and your personality is so unique and so big and I, I thought you know you had that cage fighting that cage fighting video every time i see it, oh, i think it's hysterical that, yeah uh it's just the funniest thing i you know and uh, he put that choke on harder than i wanted him to but it worked out really well because i was i was i was eating the pizza choking on it and tapping at the same time and i was in tears <laughs> yeah, and i wasn't in pain i was just in tears laughing because it was a great video and i i said well I, this guy has like this not an alter ego but like that's who you are like you are a personal trainer you're a cage fighter you like you you do all this, so why not bring yeah. them both together? It, it just made so much sense. It was so clear to me to recommend, yeah. and you were just on it right away. I appreciate that, man. To clear the air, I do not fight in the cage. I train in the cage with the fighters that do fight in the cage. I, I'm more jujitsu. I'm more like, I'll get in the cage on a Saturday morning with those guys and mix up for about an hour, but they take it easy on me. Uh -huh. They do, they do. It's, um, you know, if I wasn't 42, if I was 32 or 22, and I started training like this in jujitsu at Good Tree MMA, um, Cage fighting would have been something I probably would have did, but I'm older now, and it's just not something I would be able to train for, or be interested in doing. I'd be interested in doing it, but I'm just—it's too much right now. You know what I mean? But those guys and girls that we have on our rosters, they—they they really get at it, and I admire what they do and the work that they put into, and the trainers as well. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we get you in for a free class one of these days. Oh, I gotta—I gotta do some laps because I haven't in the house a few times <laughs> before I get there. I haven't done a jujitsu, a pizza after jujitsu video in a while. That's what you were talking about. We, I, those guys were training for a fight. And it was funny as Hunter, who put me in the chokehold, he's my good, he's one of my good friends. He's one of our active fighters. He was, he was getting ready for a fight that weekend and he couldn't eat the pizza. So he smelled the pizza, did the review with me, but they couldn't, him and Jesse, they couldn't eat the pizza, which is hysterical, so. <laughs> uh, again, I, I bring it up all the time to people. Oh, you see him? I was like, yeah, but go watch that video. Absolutely that was a great, you know, I appreciate that, Obviously, man. you've made a lot of other great stuff since yeah, then, but. Come a long way, but you know, we'll get into that. But I wanna, you know, I wanna ask you, um, I know a little bit about your first review. Like, I you, you put like a brief story, but like tell my audience and tell myself, what was your first review? How did it go? Why did you want to do it? What made you do it? And then how have you progressed from there? So my first review, um, I thought would be in the pizza capital of the world, right? All four. Mm, right? My hometown. You, you know it My well. hometown, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I remember I went to Arcaro and Janelle's. And uh, at the time, I think my smartphone broke. And I had a little, like, clamshell flip phone okay. at the time. Um, and I, I, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I got into this cause I wanted to just stay in touch with pizza. Like mm -hmm. I, I've worked in pizzerias for a decade through high school and college. And I said, you know, I, I want to keep, stay in touch with it somehow. So I decided I was going to go try different pizza places and write about it. And, um, uh, blogging was not like a sexy thing to do at the time. So I was anonymous about mm -hmm. it. Like I just kind of went on said whatever I said and, uh, be done but I remember it being the most awkward thing in the world I wasn't on camera yet and I remember thinking like oh geez I'm you know taking horrible everybody's dirty. staring at me yeah I, feel, I, I honestly I still feel <laughs> yeah. that way I still feel awkward mm -hmm. uh, every time mm -hmm. you know I did a piece of review on the way here I still felt terribly awkward you feel comfortable but awkward at the same time does that make sense uh, yeah, I feel comfortable because I don't take myself seriously. Mm -hmm. And like I always say, I'm a one take guy. Like what you see is what you get. People always let me know when I mess up. Well, that's sure part they, of sure they that do. You, what you see is what you get. I try to be authentic as possible. Um, but the, but uh, back to the first review, I just remember it just being this kind of mechanical trying to figure out what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. 
and it was it was, the pictures were horrible. The pizza was very good. Right? Mm-hmm. The, the the pictures were horrible. My writing was just deplorable. It was terrible. <laughs> but I posted this, and yeah. uh, and I liked it. And I, you know, it wasn't for anybody else. I never set out to be have anyone read it. I didn't like. It sounds dumb. I'm gonna push push this out to the public, but um, I never had this sense of I'm going to do this so that other people know about it. It was just kind of like this personal diary thing okay. that I would publish online. Okay. And then I did it again, and I did it again. I loved it, and the writing was horrible. It, it, it was, it, you know, I'm not proud of those early days. It just, it, I, I look back on some of them because I have them in like a stored file, but okay. just terrible. I was like, what are you thinking? Like, uh, you know, it, <laughs> um, so I look back and I say, that's just not good. But I, oh, you learn every experience one after the other. After, right. And then, um, you know, you learn about what people want to know about, like talking about pizza sauce, right? Mm-hmm. Like they want to know, is it smooth or chunky? Is it, is it, is it sweet? Is it savory? Is it, uh, what is it? It does it have onions in it. Heaven forbid for some people. Right. Um, and that is, that's a bit of a challenge. I think, you know, to like accurately describe, particularly when you're live on camera, um, the sauce in particular, yeah. right. Or they, people yeah. want you to guess the cheese, yeah. right. Jim, I mentioned to you earlier that. I was going to ask you, how do I describe the sauce? And like, it's just tomato sauce. There's some seasoning in it. But I always say like the same generic thing, like, oh, it's savory. It has salt and pepper in it. <laughs> I, just, so, I just get past it. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, um, so I like, see, I'm kind of on a, like, I don't want to say scientific level because I make so much pizza at mm-hmm. home and I experiment. Like I, I've tasted like uh, 75 different tomatoes and rated them so i kind of know like a california tomato from a san marzano tomato and what you know you know we have a lot of california and jersey tomatoes around okay. here that we use there california is a little bit sweeter jersey has that little tang to it and that like almost little grittiness with the seeds um to it which is you know don pepino that's a that's okay. a jersey sauce okay. and you can always kind of pick that out but people aren't so much interested in where the tomatoes come from they I, I really learn how to describe to my readers in a way that they ask for, right? So 12 years of doing this, they want to know those things. Sweet, is it spicy? Like, that's too hot. You know, I'm clearing my throat when I'm eating it. Okay. There's black pepper in it. Okay. Uh, so you want to point those things out, right? But my followers are not the same as yours, though. So they might be looking for something different, right? I'm not saying my followers are looking for a sauce. I feel like I need to involve better and give more details on my reviews because I'm just a pizza lover, you know. Um, I never really made pizza. Family owned a little pizza place years ago in Derrier for a little while, but I mean, made some old forged pizza. But I never really, like, never made dough. Um, I never made, I make sauce all the time, you know what I mean? So I, I know I put in my sauce, you know, I mean, when it comes to describing the food in general, it's just like, oh, this pizza's great, the cheese on there's fantastic. I show the crust more. People like really into the crust, but like, I feel like I could describe it more. But then again, maybe I'm overthinking. And I, you know, I think you might be overthinking, right? Because um, you think about, you know, Portnoy is one of the most, fam- he's obviously mm-hmm. the most famous sure. pizza reviewer in the world. He doesn't really talk much about sauce or anything. Almost zero, almost zero detail. Right. They don't care. He tells you what the flop's like and he gives you a score. We move on. Yeah. Like, but people watch that, mm-hmm. right? He speaks to a certain uh, demographic right. that understands it and knows that if it hits a certain number, you're going to drive there. Right. Now, uh, my audience is extremely different from that audience, right? So they're looking for a vanilla, like safe, uh, PG. Okay. Uh, you know, so I understand my audience. I understand myself and I know what I can describe. So I think it's more important not to describe sauce or cheese or dough in a way that you think it should be described. It's how are you feeling about it when you eat it? Right? Okay. Like, what's the first impression you get? Because people want to know about how you feel. They don't follow you to, for the pizza you're trying. They're following for your opinion on the okay. pizza, right? Yeah. So it's important for you to let people know how you feel about it, not how you think you should describe it. I understand right? what you're saying. Yeah, I understand yeah, what you're so saying. That, and that's why I follow you, because you're uniquely you. Like, yeah. you're, There's nobody else like you on there, even though I see the comments. It's all been done before, you know, I get them too, you know. Yeah, like I said earlier, people think that, like, food reviews are a new thing in this world. I said, who were we cracking up at earlier? Like like I said, Middle middle Ages with these little these little bars, these little taverns back in the day. They was probably doing, like, stew reviews and, like, ale reviews from the bottle, you know what I mean? Like, people were probably doing reviews from the dawn of time. 
Like Adam and Eve are reviewing the apple they ate probably. And, oh, it's a good apple. You know what I mean? It was an apple they ate, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> there have always been influencers throughout yes. our lifetime, yes. right? And, but it's just uh, throughout history. It's just a matter of now the spotlight is turned up because of phones and mm-hmm. social media and like just instant access to right. get it out. I mean, I can get a video out conceivably if I'm really focused within an hour of taking a bite. Right? Absolutely, man. If you just get in, you take the bite, go back in your car and put the video together and release it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's it's definitely a lot easier. And the point I was trying I was gonna make, then I was gonna go. So let's keep going. What we're talking about, right? So it's this like the reviews, everybody does them. It's just a matter of you gotta keep doing it. You, your first review you said you didn't like it. But you Sarah. kept on going. So what was your second review like? Uh, it was probably just as bad. Okay. You know, it was just as bad. So, like, I just kept going, and I, like I said, I never had a plan for this. Mm-hmm. I never thought that I'd get any followers. You know, my mom was my only follower at one point. She didn't even know uh, I was doing it. Right? Was it always any PA pizza review, or did it yep. start? Okay, so that yeah. was your original thing. I just thing. named it that, and and get, at the beginning, I was I was anonymous, right? But. I learned, uh, you know, people are telling me you, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta do videos. You gotta do, okay. and I said, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm face for radio. I'm not, you know, like my voice to me. When I'm hearing my voice in these headphones, it's like, it's just a ghastly. Sound. Your voice brings me into your videos, just so you know, like, it, like you're opening. It's like, I want to see the pizza too, but your voice like brings me into your videos. Uh, well, I'm happy so, that yeah, somebody it like I want to jam a pencil in my ear right now because it's just a <laughs> it's just a horrific sound for me. Uh, so I actually, aside from editing my videos, I don't watch them. Like, okay, I, I'm done with like that's it. As soon as I post it, it's gone. If I make a mistake, people will tell me I made oh, a mistake. Oh, they let you know. Um, but like, I just really don't like seeing myself or hearing myself. But I understand it is the way people want to consume. Uh, reviews mm-hmm. and information so yep. show them the pizza but um horrible photography like i didn't even know i would just take my phone and aim it straight down and be these flat you know yeah, awful looking images i have a few of those yeah mm-hmm. dark restaurants yeah no that, lighting no lighting and, we're, and, we're, and you're like oh this is fine yeah no it's, problem it's good no you know problem. it's great it's, you can barely see the pepperoni on <laughs> <laughs> so, and, but, but you don't care, right? Yeah. So like, um, but the, the great thing about doing what we're doing is like the skills that we come up with. Like mm-hmm. I've learned how to take, I wouldn't call myself a photographer, but I know how to produce something, you know, with a couple little tools that yeah. looks like a reasonably professional looking photo. I also don't shoot to make them look professional because I want people to see and expect what they're going to get. Absolutely. When the, they get there. No, no. Like the lighting is, the lighting is important because you want to get, you want to show the pizza on its best light. You want to get it to look like, because you can see pizza, you know, right in front of your face compared to a picture. Looks bad in the picture, but looks great in, in real life. Mm-hmm. So you got to find that happy medium with that. I feel like the close-ups at the angles are like the best thing. People want to see that. Like I said, they want to see that picture and they want to see it look like that when they order it. Absolutely. Exactly. I, I follow a lot of places on Facebook and Instagram and they promote their pizza daily. And I'm like, I have had your pizza in person. It looks way better than what you're yeah, putting. You, you read my mind because a lot of photos on people's pages are no bueno. They're, they don't look good. They're, ho- they they're look horrible. Good. They, don't they, look good. They, they just they, they look really, really bad. But then there's some that pay for professionals mm-hmm. and it you there's this expectation up there when you go in and then you get something that, you know, still looks pretty good. But, but not what you saw in the picture. Right? People don't want that. Kind of like the Big Mac and the Whopper. Yeah. But that's Burger King and McDonald's and that's that's their thing. You yeah. don't, you're not going to get that when you go there. But when it comes to pizza, local, place down the street, only made in one spot, you want it to look like what you saw online. I hear you. That's it. And I find if you exaggerate or you misinform people, your reputation takes a hit. So you can exaggerate by using Photoshop or filters. Exactly. And I don't use filters. I don't even know how to open Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like, that's even still a thing. Photoshop. I think yeah, I think you can make a lot of money if you know how to use Photoshop. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, great. Uh, that's but great. I don't. I, yeah. I had the program several times. I just don't know even. I just figured there's filters on everything now. Yeah, you I don't know, know I mean? how to do it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's interesting. But I was gonna say before I remember what I was gonna say before. What has me? Because I want to know about what your where your passion for pizza and food came. My passion for food and came because I worked in the restaurant business for like over twenty years. So to be to have that still be part of my life now is what drives me to uh, keep my page going and, and doing what I'm doing. And now we're doing this now because I'm, I'm I am passionate about food. I'm passionate about the industry. And another topic I want to get into is how neither one of us 
throw any throw any shade on anybody any any pizza places because I have pizza reviews that I've done that I just didn't care for the pizza it wasn't my flavor and but I'm like no one needs to know about that because just because I don't like the pizza doesn't mean the other hundreds of thousand people in the area don't like the pizza and like it's not my it's not my place to give a bad review what's your opinion on that so uh, you know we were talking about early reviews and uh, I uh, just assumed nobody was was looking and when I say I'm not proud of a review uh, I I mean the writing was terrible the structure was ter- but I also mean I said some real dumb stuff that you know just like it doesn't need to be out it didn't need to be said I, mean I, stuff like like not mean I, but like I did I, I wrote stuff. I did you know originally some uh, things that would be construed as negative yes. okay so it was like a little more uh snappy and like you know not really thoughtfully said or anything. and again i never thought anybody would be looking right or, or caring because it wasn't for people it was for me mm-hmm. and um it was just a nice outlet but i quickly learned though that people were looking and i got some feedback and i said oh wait a second that <laughs> if this person read it that way then you know i, I got it this is I got to pivot. Yeah. And there was actually one time um, that it really this, this is a cool story I like to tell is a uh, place um, there was Basilico's. It was in Clark Summit. Basilico's is like the OG brought real like good New York style grandma mm-hmm. pizza here uh, and popularized grandma pizza, in my opinion. Uh, well, that location got bought out by Rosario's and I had a really strong place in my heart for Basilico. Sure you did. So when I go into Rosario's, I have this predetermined notion that I'm going to get something of Basilico's, you know, that I, like, I, I would eat it three to five times a week, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I go in and I got, I went on like an off time. That's something I do often because I, I just like to, you know, not a big crowd person, you know. So I got like a pretty lackluster slaw. It's probably a few hours old, you know. This is like 11 years ago, okay. I'm going to say. And uh, so I wrote, it wasn't like a bad review or anything like that. It was like a vanilla, you know, wish you, wish it was a little bit fresher type of thing, whatever mm-hmm. it was. I don't remember exactly. Uh, I get an email a day or two later from the owner and uh, I was like, oh no, <laughs> like, you know, because <laughs> you can't read tone in an email. I understand. Right? Yeah. So he's like, how about you come in and we talk about it? And I, uh, I was reading it almost as like ominous, like, oh boy, this is the end of my pizza room. This guy's going to take me out in the back. Right. I mean, (laughs) well, but we did go in the back of the Mm -hmm. restaurant. Yeah. And uh, we sat down and we, we, he's like, you know, I explained to me why why my review was a problem for him. And I, I said, okay. And I was like, you know, you're, you're right. Yeah. I did come in at two 30 in between lunch and dinner and, you know, and it, you know, the guy rushed it in and out of the oven. It, I get it. Yeah. So it wasn't representative of the product you sell. But we ended up having this conversation about life and we worked at the same places over the years. I worked in pizzerias myself uh, for about a decade and uh, we worked with, and we knew a bunch of the same people. I ended up knowing his brother from another pizza. Oh, I love it. And lo and behold, we became friends. A lot of friendships happen that way. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it started with this, like, I was terrified. Yeah, you know I know. <laughs> but great guy. And now, you know, now, but of course, it's my that's favorite. Your, that's your spot now, That's right? my spot, mm-hmm. you know, and has been uh, for, for quite some time now. But uh, yeah, so, you know, you never know where these reviews You're will right. land. Yeah. And, you know, you gain so many relationships over there. When we were at Rosario's, remember me, when we doing our, we we're doing our collab, I didn't have the regular pizza. I had that big, was it? Was big it plan. Oh my God. It was like, it was like this big. That was the first time I tried to shoot. I'm wearing the jacket. We're doing the, we're doing the food fight, uh, the newscast, everything like that. You're doing that. You did the, um, over at Geo's Pizza. You're like, oh, hey, Brian, the, the, the special guest correspondent. <laughs> we, I posted it. I was so excited to post it. My first review got like a thousand views. I was just, I was just like, why is everybody watching it? And I got a little discouraged. I was like, the new, new, new name. Jim on there, like like my first guy to see on there, and it's only got a thousand of views. But you know, things came along. Things came a long way from that. I learned, like you were saying earlier, um, you learn what your viewers want more and more. And I'm still learning that now. Mm-hmm. I'm still learning that now. It's it's really really exciting. So I know that some of your reviewers, some of your fans, um, there's a little bit of controversy with your top ten NEPA. So. To be fair, as I was reading it, and I remember jumping into the comments because you know I'm going to dive right in. Um, you didn't say my top ten NEPA pizza review for the year. You said NEPA's pizza reviews top ten pizzas. Well, I said Jim Mirabelli's top ten pizzas. I pardon ate. me. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you are out of the area a lot. So 
why would you, and you do, and you like pizza, and you like reviews. I mean, why would you not do pizza reviews outside of the area? So what if NEP is in your name? You do a lot for this area and everything like that. You're out of the area, down in Philly or wherever you are, do pizza reviews. I do the same thing. I did reviews in Vegas. It was $17 for, for a slice of pizza. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. So um, what brought that on? How did it make you feel? How do you feel about it now? So I don't like doing top tens. I don't like doing rankings. I don't like doing scores on my videos because I feel like it, you know, it falsely implies that one place is better than another. And I think it spurs negative debate. Like it's inherently negative, right? This person wasn't on, or this pizza place wasn't on the list. And this one should have been ranked higher than that one. It, everyone tends to say negative things about those on the list and tells you uh, it, 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 it's always, it, it's a great way to get a lot of clicks and a great way to get a lot of reactions. Right. I don't like to do it. Um, now, I get asked at least weekly to give me top tens. And I said, you know, send me a private message. I'll, I'll give you my top five, you know. And, you know, everyone, okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. And we don't debate because we can have a conversation about yeah. it. And, like, they'll it's tell me who they like. It. But Facebook land in particular just has this way about it where if one troll comes in then their friends get notified that they commented and then all these people pile on and now you know i love the haters right mm -hmm. i really like creative haters who are thoughtful and like really get to it you know what i mean so i i enjoy that stuff like uh, some guy the other day told me my pizza looked like it was a self-rising crust grocery store pizza and it made my day you know but it was one of little, the little di giorno's little di but it was like this beautiful neapolitan it was one of my most like proud pizzas that i made and you here's make some guy. good pizzas bro I, I make some really bad ones too but yeah. like this guy took the time to really characterize it and thought about it. And I was like, you know what? Comment of the day. I shared it, you know, <laughs> but like, you know, so this top 10 list predictably went south, right? There was support for it, but uh, I understand why people were mad. My, the name of my page, NEPA pizza review, and I named three out of the top four were from Philadelphia. So they wanted, not to interrupt, um, they wanted, would you would be a first, they wanted a top 10 NEPA list for the year. That's what they want. That's what they wanted. Yeah. And some of them probably read it that way. They did. And then got into the comments because they, re they, they read it wrong. Either they read it wrong, then saw other places, got pissed off at both of them. This episode is brought to you by Genoa Wholesale Foods, a family-owned pizza and restaurant supply company located in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Genoa carries over 500 different products and provides services to hundreds of pizzerias, restaurants, delis, and taverns. Tomato products, cheeses, flour, spices, poultry, meats, pastas, appetizers, oils, paper products, pizza boxes, you name it, Genoa has got you covered. Call Genoa today at 570-823-6142 or visit them online at GenoaFoods.com. Again, that's 570-823-6142 or G-E-N-O-A-F-O-O-D-S dot com. Genoa Wholesale Foods, servicing the pizza and restaurant industry since 1947. This episode is brought to you by T-Shirts and 24. With over 60 years of experience in screen printing, T-Shirts and 24 provide screen and digital printing on almost any apparel as well as promotional items. No order is too large or small. Easy to design your own custom apparel online using their free online design tool. They offer pickup options to most regions in Northeast Pennsylvania. Plus, they offer nationwide shipping. And if time is crucial, opt for the 24-hour turnaround and same-day shipping options. Call T-Shirts and 24 today at 570-471-7588 or visit them online at t-shirtsin24.com. Either they read it wrong, then saw other places, got pissed off at both of them. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, no, I, I, and look, I understand where they're coming from. Most people don't read the title and most people just scroll quickly. They not they didn't read my rationale. It's a big problem in the world today. Yeah, they're, they're not big <laughs> on it, right? And I don't expect, I don't feel like I'm that important that you should stop and read every word that I wrote either. So I understand why people are angry, Okay, right? that's fair. It was just the, the copy and paste, like, this, you know, take away this guy's residency. He doesn't live here. He's not from here. And it's like... 
you know, but like you, you see the same <laughs> see carbon comment, and I, I got a few very choice ones in the messages yeah. too. Oh, really? Um, Private messages? Yeah, it's, really, it's really. Yeah, I can't say that on this program. I bet. But um, people were you so couldn't. upset, and uh, you know, so and I was getting irritated. Usually, nothing bothers me, but like when you see the same carbon copy comment like i'm introspective right so yeah. i understand where people are coming from i disagree with them yeah. because i wanted to tell you what my 2023 was like mm -hmm. and what pizza experiences i had and here were the top 10 pizza experiences i had that's what i wanted to share yeah people say your name's nepa everything you do should be nepa oh. right so what are my choices change my name to Either pizza my review. name. Pizza review. Jim's yeah. Pizza Reviews. Right? Yeah. And I say, no, I'm not going to do that. I built this brand here. Yeah. I've, it like, it It wasn't anyone else's blood, sweat, and tears that did this for 12 years. Right. And it may look like fun, as you know, on camera for the 60 seconds, but it's a lot of work. There is work into I it. I can't, I don't know how many tens of thousands of hours I probably mm -hmm. put into that, you know, um, but it's like every day, every day, you know, and you don't know how many seconds add up to something, but, and I, and so I say, you know, usually I take the feedback and I, I adapt, but I said, hard no, I'm, I'm any PA pizza review. I'm Jim Mirabelli. I get to put, say what's on my page and I ate these pizzas and I'm going to tell you the 10, the, what I set out to tell you was the 10 best pizzas I ate in 2023. Absolutely, bro. And that's it. I looked at every one of them. They that's all look. It. They all look really good. They all look great. Yeah, and that's it. It's not too many bad pizzas in the area. No, I yeah. but I I think I had 150 or so pizzas last year, and I mean, I would say at least a 30 to 40 percent of them deserve to be on a top mm -hmm. 10 list. Yeah, I mean, there's I mean, there's a lot of like 7.5s in there. That's like a, a above average type pizza for me. That's like kind of my my middle ground. Mm -hmm. And then people get upset. Um, that I don't give bad reviews, right? Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. I, people people ask me, they're like, why don't you post it? Oh, you like everything. Why don't you post a bad review? Um, I'm, uh, they think I'm lying about it. Like, oh, you're only posting that for they get this and that. I'm like, no, if I, if I posted a pizza and I trashed it, people would love it. I posted a picture of a Dunkin' Donuts coffee that I bought for my fiance, Shannon. Hey, Shannon, I love you. But I bought her, big, one of my biggest supporters, by the way, my biggest supporters this whole last year. Um, I bought her, I was going to bring her a coffee to work. It was a, a, a medium black co medium coffee with oat milk. That's it. It was $4.18. It was $3.18 three, four months ago. I know for a fact it was. I would go there once in a blue moon. I usually make her coffee and bring it to the work for her. But I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts. I was over, over there on 315. And I know, maybe it wasn't 318, but it was, it was significantly cheaper one year about a few months a few months ago so i'm in the drive-thru i get it i post a picture of it i'm like i go i'm like clown world 418 for a cup of coffee with some oat milk in it two and a half i showed you two and a half million people saw that post because i blast i wasn't even blasting the coffee that's what the coffee looks like it, it's 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 oat milk and black coffee it's gonna look like that right People thought I was blasting the coffee. I wasn't blasting the coffee. I was blasting the price. And then somebody in the comments told me that, pretty much insulted me and told me he was disappointed in me because a few days later, a few days earlier, I posted a picture of Dunkin' Donut, the Dunkin' Donut holes because someone from our school, uh, kids brought them in for a birthday. So I always took a picture of the donut. I'm like, I could eat a thousand of these donut holes. They're amazing. He was like, either you're blasting it or you're liking it. I'm like, I'm liking the donuts. And now I'm blasting the coffee price. So I could have both. One, I mean, don't look at it if you don't like it. What are you getting all fired up? What are you coming in there? Comments like it was like a paragraph. Like getting fired up over me. Oh, it's locally owned businesses too. I'm like, I understand the local people own Dunkin' Donuts. But me, the 418 for a cup of coffee? Give me a break, man. Show, show me the numbers. Show me the food costs. on why, oh, Oatmeal costs extra. Oatmeal does not cost that much extra. It does cost extra than regular milk. Not that much. Anyways, I see I'm getting all fired up. <laughs> well, I, I, but the, the point you made, I mean, I'm sorry, Jim. The point you made was our pages will grow more if we did that. Oh, negativity sells. Man. Yeah, but it, I don't want that in yeah. my life. I, I'm not into it. I'm not into clickbaiting or, um, you know, all these things can get you more followers, more likes, more comments. But I, I'm not into that. I, I'd rather just be authentic, tell people what I say. But here's what I say about negative reviews, right? So the, when people say, 
you have to post negative reviews. One, no, I don't. Yeah, and well, no, I won't. Um, but two, it's they imply that you're dishonest for being positive. And that is blatantly, absolutely false, mm -hmm. right? Because um, one thing they don't take into consideration is we're not taking a random sample of any pizza or any coffee or any donut holes. We are getting feedback on a daily basis from our followers who tell us where to go. And we have reliable people that we know, we trust their palates, and we know that there's a very good likelihood that when we go visit this place, it's going to be good. Correct. Right? I agree. Not random. And you know what? We'll go back to Portnoy again. He has an app that has millions of user reviews mm -hmm. on it. And he goes where the app says are the best pizzas. Right. Right? So we're just small timers. And we get our feedback direct from our fans, yes. right, from our followers, um, and they tell us where to go. So I'm showing up. There's going to be a good likelihood of doing it. If on the off chance I have a bad pizza, I probably had three bad ones this past year, and that was largely because I was just out somewhere, wanted it's to a grab a very it. small number. Yeah. Hmm. But, like, I was just somewhere, and I was like, oh, there's a pizza place across the street. Rando, never heard of it. Not good. And it probably wasn't even that horrible, but not good. There's, there's the, you yeah. know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like I'll eat any pizza you put in front of me. Oh, absolutely. I might not go back for seconds. Right. But I'm gonna eat. It. I'm gonna eat it though. Right. Well, I tried it. You know, you shoot your intro video, yeah. you do your thing, yes. whatever, <laughs> and then it's like, uh, I just stopped filming because yeah. I know for sure this is not something that I'm gonna recommend to my audience. Yeah, it's and no it's, good. It stinks because you waste the money, you consume the carbs. Mm -hmm. You, you know, I didn't waste the gas because I was already there. But yeah. you know what I mean, like that type of thing. But that doesn't see the light of day on my page. Me neither. You know? Yeah, I understand. What's the point? And my other philosophy is like, bad pizza will weed itself out of the market, mm -hmm. or I don't understand the market, mm -hmm. right? So like, was like the Midwest is just all Domino's, Papa John's, and a lot that's of places. All, that's where it all started. Yeah, Pizza Hut, Domino's. <clears throat> but like. And what? That's okay if that's good pizza to them. That's fine. I'm know? an I'm a I'm an 11 p.m. Domino's order. We just ordered a thin crust last week. It was free pizza day. Oh yeah. On the app. Every once in a while, I get on the app. You break the glass on the app, and you get a free pizza. Oh, that's cool. I added. We got a 12 inch thin crust. I added like sausage. I like I like the supreme style. Mm -hmm. So we got sausage, pepperoni, onions, peppers, black olives. I think I'm missing something. Four dollars fifty cents. I mean. I give the driver five bucks or five fifty for, mm -hmm. for the pizza. Can't beat that. Eleven o'clock at night. People night post it. People are like, "Oh, there's so many great pizza places in the area. Why are you buying that crap?" Show me the. You show me where I could get some NEPA style pizza or some New York style pizza or some fight pizza at eleven p.m. delivered, and I'll, and I'll call that place. They don't exist. You they have, like you said, they have their place. Absolutely, they the, have their the, place. Domino's is. It's, it's selling convenience. The pan pizza is good. Yeah, they're yeah. selling. It's like it, they're, they don't compete with the locals. They don't, they don't have to. They, they don't, don't have to. Um, they're just they're selling a whole different service. You want it fast. You want it relatively cheap. You want to know exactly what you're going to get every single time. It's almost the same. It's almost the same every single time. That's fine. Yeah, it's boring to me, but like we still order it too. Yeah. You know, I'm, you don't see me post <laughs> about it. But yeah, I hear you. It's fine. But it, it, it has its place in the market. Mm -hmm. Absolutely has its place mm -hmm. in the market. And obviously, they do very well in every yeah. market. Right? <laughs> Although Papa John's didn't seem to do too well here. There used some. to be one. The only one I there was only two I remember being one in Pittston. That's now a Domino's by the bridge. Okay. That used to be Papa John's. I'm almost certain. Like like Burger King's here and then Papa John's right by the bridge. It's Domino's now. Um, up the street from the old uh, the old seafood restaurant that used to be there. Cooper's. Remember okay. Cooper's Pittston? Yep. So up yep. the street from there on the corner. That, that, that definitely used to be a Papa John's. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. And then it seems like there used to be one in Wilkesbury on, on Township Boulevard maybe because, because the awning is still there. It looks just like Papa John's, but it's another pizza place now. Like it's a it'd be a coincidence if they like hung up the same awning. But I don't really know if anybody knows about Papa John's in the area. Do you are you familiar with them when they used to be here? When was it? I, I think there was one in like maybe it was Scranton, maybe it was Music. I'm not. Um, I, I remember ordering it when I was in a hotel in Scranton at one point. Okay. And uh, I remember you, know, you get the uh, pepperoni and the garlic sauce. It, you know, it's pretty. It's neat. pretty. I haven't had Papa John's and. I don't remember. Maybe more like going somewhere, going away somewhere. I had Papa John's, but usually it's Domino's, Pizza Hut's. Not really my thing right now, but Domino's is mm -hmm. eleven thirty at night. 
You get some Domino's. You get those. You get those brownies. You got those only chocolate cakes. Oh wow! Holy shit! Are they they're good? Ridiculous. Yeah. I, I haven't. I haven't dabbled. <laughs> you ever see them though? No. They're, 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 they're like the like, Domino's has these little two. Like there th- actually, there's three little chocolate cakes, and there's like fudge inside them. So they go like a lava cake. You, my teeth hurt after it. <laughs> there's so much sugar. My teeth was just hurt after that. But the pizza, like I said, a lot of good night is really good. So. <laughs> Let's get off the pizza subject real fast. Okay. Tell me about these crab cakes. What's the name of the place where they, they sell these cra- at this gas station? Crab cakes. I see crab cakes. I see fish and chips all the time. I saw you do a review on the crab cake. And tell me about that crab cake. So, you know, uh, uh, people give me recommendations for more than um, pizza, right? So okay. I hear about this stuff all the time. Plus, I'm in that Food of NEPA group. Yeah, me too. Very too. great group. Great group. Um, and I, I, people kept talking about for a couple of years, like, Gas station crab cakes are like ridiculous. Immediately no. here at gas station, you're like, you think it's going to be like the middle of nowhere. You're going to get a food poisoning and die. That's yeah. what you think immediately. Yeah. Now, I don't think that because I know some gas stations have some good food around here. At, at, at the time, you definitely I did. That. I did. I was scared. I was terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, so I was like, I, wow, I, like a gas station crab cake. What does that look like? No, you know, sheets are pretty clean, but. It, there was never any indication that this was like a you know a sheets or a mm-hmm. Wawa. Or it was like it's gas. They ever just said gas station. Wawa's cakes. greater than sheets. I, I I don't enjoy sheets food. Me I can tolerate Wawa food. So we're getting I'm, a Wawa. I'm, I'm with you. I'll take that. We're getting one down down in Wilkesbury down there. Oh good. Good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's good competition. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm I was I forget what I was. I think I was I was driving out that way. At the, the place is called Lehman Sitco. That's right. Crab cakes or something. Lehman Sicko Express. And I was on my way out there. Um, I forget what I was doing out that way. But I was on my way and I, I caught the the banner out in the in the driveway. It said crab cakes. I was like, that's an actual gas station. It's like the gas station that I pictured from the... It's like, it looks like just a regular... Not a dirty gas... I understand. Like, like a gas station. Mm-hmm. It was just a, a literal gas station. Like convenient mark looking. Uh, I think it was like a... It was sicko, right? Okay. Um, so I was like, oh, I noted that. And I was wherever I went, I forget. And then I was on my way back and I, I saw it again. It was like this angelic light over. And I said, here we go. We're going to go try the crab cakes. I'm thinking, just no way they're that good, right? Like right. it can't be. It's a gas station. I said, it must be just the locals telling it. So I stop in there and uh, they had uh, Delos pizza from Berwick in the in the thing. So I got to try that. And then I selected by Crab Cake, kind of like when you go in the roadhouse and you pick your steak mm-hmm. out. I was like, can I have that? And then um, I thought I was going to have to take it home, but she's like, do you want me to cook it for you? So they fry it right there. Oh, nice. And uh, I was like, wow, that's a, that's a big crab How cake. How much did that crab cake cost? It was in the fifteen dollars, sixteen dollars. So you get one cake, fifteen dollars. Yeah, it was like it looked I, really good. It looked like it was full well, of clump crab meat in there. It was. It had to be. Was that like a sixteen ounce can? They usually it had to be half a can. Of oh wow! It. it was mostly crab. It was that's like, amazing. So yeah, I take it out in the parking lot and I take it. And I was like, oh, I understood immediately. It was unbelievable. It was euphoric. It was. It was. I got to try it. It was. I, I, I would. Cakes. I would pay twenty five dollars for one crab cake. I love crab cakes. I reason I remember that um, when I always see it, I always see them post about it. But I was just all these this morning doing some food shopping, and they had frozen crab cakes for five dollars. I bought them. There's five of them in there. Mm-hmm. There's regular crab meat in there. And there's imitation crab meat in there. But for five bucks, all these usually has some pretty good. All this has pretty good food for frozen stuff like their frozen potatoes, tater tots. They even had the little the Burger King hash browns, the little small circles, air fryer, fifteen minutes. Three shakes. One shake after five minutes. Every five minutes you do you lose shake. Then the last shake, salt and pepper. Uh-huh. It's gonna make a mess in the air fryer. But it's it's worth it though. Oh yeah? Salt and pepper, shake them up, look up and they extra crispy. Mm-hmm. The tater tots are the oh, they're so good. Love tater tots. French fries too. The air fryer. I make everything in the air fryer. It's great. So I'm a big I reheat my pizza up in the air fryer. How do you feel about reheating pizza up in the air fryer? Me, I'm not a not a no. I'm a huge air fryer guy. Mm-hmm. Actually, I have a, a another channel where I review kitchen appliances, and uh, I, I reviewed like seven air fryers already. Oh, so no, I, so, I'm really somewhat of an expert on air fryers, which is you know that's something different. But I, I do <laughs> I do product reviews for Amazon also. Okay, 
Uh, but uh, that's that's largely how I fund my pizza habit. Nice. Right? So um, <laughs> anyway, I, I get off the. But f- as far as reheating pizza in the air fryer, I feel like it mutes the flavors because it the air cooks around it, right? So I feel like it sort of dries the cheese out a little bit. So my preferred way to do it is in the frying pan, okay. or the cast iron skillet on a medium heat with a little bit of olive oil right. in there. I've Some people put fine. ice in there. I don't like the ice. Interesting. I, ice. Ice pr- provides steam. Okay. Um, but sense. like to me, when you put the lid over it, it traps the moisture in there and the heat coming from the bottom up replicates how it's supposed to actually cook in the oven. That's my opinion. Interesting. I'm very into it. Uh, also, I use the air fryer more than I use the frying pan because it's a pain in the butt. I use the, use the air fryer for the pizza. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> so, so I make I, all these points. but Jim, I found out that if you let the pizza... And most, and actually, most air fryer food come to room temp, then put to the air fryer, especially pizza. So you take a piece of pizza out of the fridge right to the air fryer, like you said, it's going to dry because it's going to heat the outside so fast. The, in, the inside is going to be thick and warm. You know what I mean? But let it get room temp. Two minutes in the air fryer. Absolutely. And oh. it, I'll say the same from my pizza making days. Uh, if you you should never make pizza with cold dough, ever. Right. It okay. leads to what we call the gum line, and that means raw dough because it's too cold to cook all the way through, and it also leads to a chewier, uh, more leathery, like you have to bite and pull sometimes. Okay. A lot of times that's evidence that maybe they're they're using cold dough going to the oven. Okay, so, I understand. Uh, I, I used to work at a couple of places that served tough pizza, uh, or a place that served t- tough pizza, and uh, it, we were using cold dough. I, th- I would want, I'd love to go back in time. I, I did like the pizza, but I'd like yeah. to go back in time and see if I liked it more if we used the room temp. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. How are you about with sourdough pizzas? Sourdough is like actual sourdough because a lot of people like it's like a it's a it's a thing to say, call everything sourdough now. Oh, so people 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 lie about it. Uh, uh, well, it depends because it's it's, it's all fermentation, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't get too far into that's it. That's okay. But, um, like there are things called like a poolish or a biga, which means you take um, like commercial yeast and you start it. You get it. It's called a starter. You get the fermentation going in like a jar, and it looks like what sourdough would be doing. Okay. But a, a genuine sourdough is not really started by commercial yeast. It's started by like um, you know some people use grapes or something like that to to you know they go sour and then the yeast builds up and that's where it kind of comes from. Um, but sometimes like I've had people mail me dried sourdough starter that they've created from whatever rye or whatever it is, okay. and then you try to keep it alive. Like it's a lot of work to do sourdough. I understand. Like I've, legit. Seems like it is. It's, um, I'm sorry, were you done? I apologize. I, I'm so bad I with am this not sometimes. <laughs> good enough. Uh, I, I don't have the patience or the schedule or the time to do sourdough. And also, I, I've tried it probably 10 different times. I'm still terrified of st- sourdough. I can get that. We made dough, we made dough together. Yeah, you we did. Me. We made Detroit-style dough on the fly at WVIA. That was a lot, that was a lot of fun. That was a blast. That was a lot of fun. There was a big pizza, big pizza buffet there, and I didn't eat other pizza on my buffet on my on my tray. I no. over I over pizzaed my tray, uh-huh. and then so anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, we um, you did a Detroit style pizza uh, demonstration at the VIA pizza party. So you're on the stage there. You were you you were showing the whole crowd how to make how to make Detroit style pizza. And a lot of people got into it, you know, and the ones that were sitting up there, they were really, I was, I was really into it. You brought me up there to help you make the dough. That was really, really cool. But um, when we first got there, they gave us a pizza tray and there was a pizza buffet for the pizza party. All types of places, right? all the local places were there. A lot of my favorite places were there and I put, I over pizza in my tray and I had nowhere to put my tray down. It was packed in there. I couldn't get a table. And I'm walking around holding the water Holding, holding a tray. I'm wearing my red jacket. I'm just like, I gotta put this pizza somewhere. I put it down somewhere, and like it fell on the ground. I was like, oh my god! I wait. Hopefully, nobody saw me do that. You know what I mean? But yeah. that was a really, that was a really, really fun time. Do you catch yourself doing a lot of those, a lot of those things a lot of the time? Like a lot of special events. Do you put yourself out there? Do they reach out to you? How does that all work? So special events are something that I would love to kind of get into. Um, I. Just really, you know, between work and family and just reviewing pizza, mm-hmm. I'm just constantly going, uh, you know. Uh, so, like, scheduling is not my thing, as you might have noticed when we tried to get this uh, whole hey, podcast we, arranged. We, we made it happen. I wasn't hearing back from you once in a while. I was like, he's just busy, you know what I mean? And then you get back to me, so I wasn't going to bother you, but I was going to 
eventually overtext you. Yeah. I was going to call you more than once. <laughs> I, I'm notoriously difficult to schedule and uh, I frustrate people. I, I am very sorry about that. Oh, no, man. Listen, we were doing the same thing, man. We weren't getting ready. We were getting ready here and then we had to do this and do that. And just it, things happen when they're supposed to happen, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Here we are. And I said to myself when you were coming here, I'm like, I'm, I'm, less, I'm like, I bet, Jim's bring, I bet Jim brings, I bet Jim brings pizza. Cause this, he's the pizza guy. He's going to bring some pizza. Came in, you brought some, you brought some pizza from your latest review, which you'll be dropping on your, on your page eventually. Oh yeah. You brought me a sweatshirt, man. I absolutely love it. You know what I mean? So I was wondering if you'd be interested in doing the saltine cracker challenge. I posted a picture of saltine crackers, but butter on my page. I think a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if you came across it, but people just, the nostalgia of that absolutely blew up because I remember sitting at my grandparents, my grandmother, be like, oh, come on, Brian, we'll have a snack. And it will be saltine crackers with butter and then the grape jelly on the side. And she like, grape jelly, butter, and saltine crackers were like the snack growing up. And did you eat those as well when you were growing up? Oh, yeah. Um, so we used to go to a place called Gin's Tavern in Factoryville. It burned okay. down recently. Interesting. And they're oh, rebuilding now. I think I saw you post about that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's terrible. They're like, rebuilding now? That's great. Yeah. That's great. So, yeah, the, so bigger and better than ever, but like, that was a piece of my childhood, you know, just mm-hmm. kind of, you know, so a lot of people very sad about it, but they would always bring you out the bread and underneath the bread was a napkin, then all the saltine crackers and okay. the sesame sticks. Oh, and, um, the sesame sticks. And like, mm. I always remember my dad, mm. he would put the butter on the saltine and I'd be like, oh, yeah. and then I tried it. I was like, oh, this is amazing. You know, like that's living, you know? Like, it's so good. And I like, I'm a, I am a salt. I eat salt. I add salt to everything I eat. I don't even taste the food first. It needs salt for me. Mm-hmm. My, my, as long as my blood pressure stays okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy my, my Himalayan pink salt. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, I, would, I, would, I would get the saltine cracker, put the butter on there, and then I would put a, a shake of the, of the salt. And it was just, I had to stay in my kitchen and eat those. But, so you agreed to do the saltine cracker challenge with me. For those that may not know it, the saltine cracker challenge has been around since elementary school at the kids' table in school. I have never seen anyone do it before. A few people that I know said they've done it or seen somebody. I don't believe them. I think there's a better chance of an alien bringing us pizza from outer space than there is to eat six saltine crackers in one minute. You could eat them one at a time, two at a time. You could crush them up in your hand and shove them in your mouth. You know what I mean? But it's six crackers in one minute. Are you ready? I am now. Do you have to swallow all six of them? That's oh, the rule. Okay, has to be so clear. they have to go no, down. There could be a little. We're not even going to make it to the fourth one. Okay, bro. All right. Let me grab my phone real fast. Set a timer. And I don't want to be too far from the microphone, but here we are. So, I'm not sure. I bought a big box of saltine crackers. I almost bought Rich crackers. Absolutely love Rich crackers. I do too. I think saltines, I think, are the OG of this challenge, though, right? Oh, yeah, you can't yeah. do it. You could eat, I could probably eat 400 salt, uh, rich crackers. Oh, they, right? they have a little more buttery, they're less mm-hmm. dry, I would say. All right, Jim. So, six crackers. Ooh, these are fat crackers, too. Oh, boy. Six for you. Now, can I prime a little bit here? Could take a little. Yeah, absolutely, man. Get some, get some liquid in there. We're going we're gonna to do this and then we'll get going, all right? So, I'm going to get a little sip of water myself. I mean, it doesn't doesn't look that hard. You can get crumbs all over the place if you want to. Okay, I have a cleanup crew. All right, excellent, <laughs> excellent. I might be the cleanup crew. Are right, you ready? Let's do it. All right. I mean, I guess the only way to do it is just dive right in and go Set for the timer. it. Right? Set the timer. All right. We are rocking and rolling. One minute. Yeah. Ready? It's one cracker, 10 seconds. I'm not even done with it yet. I feel like I might get to four. We're oh, almost boy. halfway. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway. I'm a bit of a competitor, so I'm trying to stay ahead of you. Oh, boy. Hitting the wall. Hitting the wall, right? Don't go down. <laughs> They're all building up. I feel like Joey Chestnut. <coughs> I'm going 
Oh man. You do got a bedroom. You're not down, not. Die. Like a chipmunk. <laughs> I thought I'm too left. I got <laughs> Now, Jim, for those that aren't, aren't watching on YouTube, um, Jim got all of them in his mouth. He's chewing them, but there's a buildup from every single yeah. one in his mouth still. I have a physical pain at the moment here. <laughs> I don't know how you can improve on your time. I, don't, mm. I, I felt like if I stored it in my cheek, I would be able to get some saliva going there, but it just wouldn't happen. We're drying out at the same time mm -hmm. while every cracker is building up from the last one. I appreciate you doing that for me, man. I was out. So I was is, is this something this. we can expect in the future, like a challenge of yeah. this kind on your we show? Could definitely, we could definitely come up with some more stuff. And I, if I could do it, I want to challenge everyone to do this, but we can't let it get, we can't let it get too stale. Pardon mm -hmm. the, the pun, you know, but tell you what, I'm hungry and those crackers were really good. But if there was some butter on there, a little butter, maybe that would help a little bit. But anyway, Jim. Thank you so much for being on the show, Jim. I appreciate you coming out, making time to come on. I know you're busy. And um, we share a lot of the same stuff on our pages, but we're also I feel like we're completely different. And I know that we did collabs together. I definitely would like to do more collabs in the future. I don't know if I have crackers in my teeth or not, so I'm sorry to everybody. Um, but how does everyone come into contact with your content online? What are your platforms, all that kind of stuff? What do you do? Uh, so the, the center of my sort of pizza universe is NEPAPizzareview.com. That's what I have a passion for. That's where I post all of my content. But uh, people know me more from being on Facebook or Instagram at NEPA Pizza Review, okay. right? So they, pe most people don't even know I have a website uh, or a YouTube channel or Twitter or a TikTok or anything like that. But I'm on all the social out, uh, outlets and uh, you can come check me out there. Awesome, bro. I know, real quick, TikTok's a whole other animal. I try to post on TikTok a lot. I try to get that algorithm down. I check out your page on there. You treat TikTok a little bit differently than you do Facebook as far as I, videos go? I feel like every platform you have to treat differently because um, you try to, something plays well on Facebook. I, I'll post it just to Instagram just because and TikTok just because I got to keep content going. And I know it's going to be a flop because mm -hmm. it's just not, it's not catchy and quick. And, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I try, I like to learn. I love to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had time to do this all the time, I would, I would just immerse myself. You mentioned you were reading a book on TikTok. I was reading was, a book on TikTok. You mentioned that when we were at Rosario's. I'm like a serial learner. I, now, I do audio books, you know, so like okay. if I'm driving somewhere, I just listen. Uh, but yeah, I, I was like, you know what? Let me read a book about TikTok. Now, you know you're old when you're reading a book about TikTok, right? But I thought, you know, like how can I create content on another platform and reach kind of a different audience? Because every platform is totally different. Like my Instagram is way more male than female. Mm -hmm. My Facebook audience is way more female than male. Huh. And the, the ages are different because, like, you know, they kind of break yeah. the ages down way younger on Instagram, a little bit, um, a little more advanced age, you know, like on the average on yeah. Facebook. It's very, it's just so interesting how different the audiences are. And you have to provide totally different content for those audiences. I get it. Use different. Jim, again, thank you for being on the first episode of Food Fight. And I want to definitely, it's going to be a good year. We'll do some things together. A lot of pizza coming this year. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Need you to come down to Old Forge a little bit. We need to go to Old Forge together, my hometown, and try to Old Forge pizza together. Let's do it. All right, Jim. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you, buddy. Right. Take it easy. Thank you. This was Food Fight. My name is Brian DeMatte. This was an On The Stacks production.